As I was growing up, uh, one question I was always asked is, what, it's, what is it like having a father that is a, a Formula One world champion? I always felt it was a difficult uh, question to answer because obviously you only get one family and your lifestyle and the lifestyle we lived is the only one I ever knew. But as you grow up and make friends, I started to understand that our life was a little bit different to uh, other families. Although one thing that really stood out more than anything else, it definitely was not boring. A three-time Formula One world champion. He was one of the most successful drivers ever and team owners and the first driver to be knighted for services to motorsport. Living in the UK and despite my racing surrounding me, I was not overly interested in motor racing as a young child. He was just simply my grandfather and that was it. I'm sincerely grateful and blessed to have grown up with Sir Jack as just plain simply my grandpa. Growing up as a kid, sitting at the family dinner table, listening to the stories, near-death experiences, and mischievous antics was very inspiring for me. To his dying day, he always treated everyone he met as an equal. To be greeted with humility and respect, pauper or prince, plumber or prime minister, he would greet everyone with the same trademark, dazzling smile and a friendly, how are you going? A man was as much a champion in his private life as he was known for his achievements on and off the racetrack. Away from the glamour of Formula One, Jack loved his role as a grandfather and was proud to hear all about his grandchildren's achievements through their school years and more recently developing into young adults pursuing their careers. Every race meeting was an adventure. It started with just trying to get to the track. Dad had his own plane and we flew to all the races together. Sometimes we would land in the field next to the track uh, or at the nearest uh, airport. That sounds simple enough. But in those days, there were not the rules and regulations that we have today, so things could get very interesting, to say the least. I can remember landing in a field next to Alton Park in northern England, and as usual, we were late and the sun had already gone down. And as we touched down, it became very clear that we were, were definitely not going to stop before the lake. The next thing I know, Dad spun the plane backwards and had the engines on full power. Next thing I know, we actually managed to stop with a, almost with the tail hanging over the water. Dad just laughed and uh, taxied back to the people who were waiting for us as if nothing had happened. Vaguely famous for various things he had achieved, he popped into my life during the years even visiting Goodwood for the first time in sitting in one of his race guards, but yet again he was just still my grandfather. Always interested in what I was up to regardless of what I was doing or where I was. Probably's advice to me was always pretty straightforward three simple words, get after him. At first it didn't mean much, though it sank in over time and the more and more times he said it. It reflected his amazing character, get stuck in, lose the hesitation and excuses, if so buts, man up, grow a pair and get after him. So Jack Brabham was a champion, a champion who did it his way. He was a battler, he took on the world as well, ladies and gentlemen, and he won time and time again. Following Dad around the racetracks was incredible back then. Some years he would be doing F1, F2, and the British Touring Car Championship all at the same time. In my opinion, Dad's greatest gift was his amazing feel for anything mechanical, whether it was flying or driving a race car. Yes, he would push the limits, but he always had that feel where the limit was on any given day and it was the main reason he sta stayed alive when so many didn't. But at the end of the day, he was a racer, and I know he's lying there with a smile on his face that Matthew and Sam have decided to follow his footsteps, and the Brabham name will still be winning races around the world. Very recently, I watched a documentary on Grandfather's Era, and the realization dawned on me that we are all very privileged and very, very lucky to have experienced him in another light, not just in racing, but as we were growing up as well, as so many others perished as he prevailed. I'll always look at Pop for who he was as an overall complete person, which for me, in my eyes, is greater than any of his motor racing achievements. One thing I'm really thankful for is that Dad lived in the perfect era for him. He would not have survived in the cotton wool, over-regulated world we have created today. I could not imagine Somewhat, some so-called academic sitting behind a desk with no life experience trying to ban Dad from doing something because there was a million to one chance of scratching yourself. 
His legacy to me, Matthew, and all of our, all the grandchildren will never be forgotten. I know there will be very few people in this world that Dad will swap his life with. I know one of his goals was to outlive his enemies, and he definitely achieved that. He lived an incredible life, and I don't believe you could ask for any more. I could say, rest in peace, but I know he's up there trying to talk someone into building something so they can race against each other.